Welcome back to another episode of Slide Bite, and the waifu of the day is the MP7. Now, for those of you who play Half-Life 2, Girls Frontline, all that jazz, this gun is definitely familiar. But uh, for those of you who want to actually buy one, what is this one like? Now, this particular one is made by KWA. And uh, KWA is either famous or infamous for a lot of people's cases, making pretty okay firearms um, for airsoft, specifically their gas blowbacks. I haven't had any experiences with their AEGs, but uh, no harm, no foul, right? So, before we begin the video, I'd like to give my usual thank you to Airsoft Extreme. They've been always helpful in letting me <laughs> desecrate their field, and uh, they've been re they've been really wonderful. They have multiple stores all over the uh, I guess U.S., but mostly California, uh, and uh, right now they uh, they're starting to slowly open up. So go ahead and give give them a quick look, see man. Uh, their fields are going to be opening up soon, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Another huge thanks to the Heavy Recoil Club. They've been excellent and helpful in uh, providing their own personal experiences and feedback to help make this video a lot more informative. Um, when trying to buy one of these. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this. So before we talk about performance and handling, like always, we're gonna take it to the table. All right, so we got our KWA uh, MP7 here on the table. And the first thing you'll notice is that this thing is actually pretty small. Uh, I have an RMR on here and uh, you can actually see it's a pretty compact uh, package here. If I measure it out, it's almost a little more than 16 inches long, uh, about 10 inches with the magazine in. This is a 40 round magazine. We'll touch on that in a moment. But this is actually not the accurate size of the MP7. Uh, KWA's version of the MP7 is actually slightly smaller at around 90% the size. But what this means is that for those of you who are chasing authenticity, this is going to be kind of points off. But for anyone else who is looking for a small uh, rapid deployment platform, this is a pretty good choice. Before uh, we take this apart, let's go over controls. For starters, the gun is ambidextrous. So what this means is that there are controls on both sides. Let's go ahead and take a look at the controls right now. So we have our fire select. Uh, there's only two fire modes on this particular MP7. We have a bolt catch. The bolt catch has an interesting quirk about it that we'll go over uh, in, near the end. We have a trigger safety and our trigger and we have a paddle style of uh, magazine uh, release. So if I push down it releases the magazine. Aside from that, there's not much else in terms of uh, controls. We do have a lever here to uh, deploy the stock. There is a spring catch in the stock, so if I lift up, it'll spring out just a little bit. This is so that you can get your fingers in there and pull it out a lot easier. This particular MP7 also has the uh, traditional folding stock, or uh, not folding stock, folding foregrip. Um, to use that you just push backwards and uh, move into position. There is only one position, there is no other positions uh, on this. Uh, bear in mind that this is the MP7A1. The A2 version has the Picatinny on the bottom and some versions of the MP7A2 come in uh, tan. So overall it's, uh, it's pretty cool as is. This is a really nice uh, vertical foregrip to grip onto. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and field strip this. So for starters, what we need to do is we need to remove the uh, wire stock. So to do that, you lift up, pull the way out till it hits that uh, catch. Then on the back and the front here, you lift up and pull out. Pretty easy. So from here, we need to punch these two pins out. So to do that, I'm gonna flip the gun around. I'm gonna need a punch for this, or in this case, I got a electrical socket that does the job just fine. And just 
punch it out like so. Bear in mind that these pins are not captive like a AR style of rifle, so be careful not to lose them. Pull those out, and you can see that the end cap here actually sprung out a little. So, going to just carefully pull, and there we go. That's your entire internals. Uh, there is the barrel and trigger group, but that requires a detail uh, strip, which we are not going to do. We are only going to do the field strip. We can go a little further on this, so for starters we can lift down a little and pull the bolt out. We can also pull the guide rod and recoil spring. And we can also pull the charging handle out. Uh, what I forgot to mention at the beginning is that the gun is a plastic receiver, a metal bolt, metal end cap metal internals and a plastic charging handle. Picatinny is metal as well. Uh, it's mainly a mix of um, plastic and metal. I'm not going to say polymer because um, this doesn't feel like polymer in any, any sort of way. So now that we have our gun entirely field strip, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and uh, list off a bit of issues that I've heard with this particular example. So for starters, uh, the plastic receivers here are known to crack. Uh, I have seen a couple images floating out there on forums and on Reddit and a whole bunch of other Discord servers. Haven't been able to actually uh, find those images again, so uh, it's really just my word against everyone else's. But the recoil cracking is confirmed. Let's get that in there. The recoil, uh, the cracking actually happens here prominently on these pins, and I have an uh, inkling as to why. Uh, the reason why is because these pins are made of metal, the polymer, uh, this is a, just plastic. The bolt is got a pretty high rate of fire on it, so what happens is that uh, it, rep it repeatedly slams into the end cap, which is also made of metal. So what happens is that because this is the weakest part of the gun, this part tends to crack. Um, bit of an issue if you plan on using this extensively. This one's been fortunate enough to not suffer from that cracking issue. Um, it's been in use for about three years, give or take. So uh, nothing, thank God, uh, nothing wrong with this one in particular. Uh, there is a, a couple of issues with the MP7 in general, not just this one, but with others uh, that alongside it. Uh, for starters, the fire safe uh, or the fire select, you can see here is actually wobbling quite a bit. It's actually more prominent on the other side, so if I just wiggle that a bit, you can see that it actually goes into the uh, ejection port there. Quite a bit. Um, bit of an issue that we'll go over in performance and handling. And then another issue that really bugs me the most is the decision to make the bolt catch go up in order to drop the bolt. What do I mean by that? So I'm going to go ahead and pop the magazine in, pull the bolt back. It does lock open on the last round, which is pretty nice. So what happens is Generally on the real steel and a couple other MP7s, you would pu uh, push down on this and it would drop the bolt. However, how KWA does it, the bolt catch needs to go up in order to release it. Uh, I'll go into more detail as to why this is an issue, but it's just a, a more prominent issue with the ergonomics of the gun. And with that out of the way, we are pretty much done looking at the gun on the table. Uh, we're going to go ahead and head over to performance and handling and discuss the issues that we brought up here on the table. I'll see you there. Alright, so now that we're back from the table, let's go ahead and discuss how does this handle. So for starters, because it is so small, it's very light, uh, it definitely feels interesting in the hands. All of this little part right here tends to be a bit uncomfortable for people who have larger hands because it kind of digs into you. But uh, overall, in pistol form, I guess it's kind of chunky. But if uh, you deploy it in its SMG form, it's not bad. 
can shoulder this pretty nicely. The cheek rest on this is kind of uncomfortable initially, mainly because it's cold. Um, but it is smooth. It's uh, it's got no real particular issues. A bit wobbly here and there, but uh, it's it's overall a pretty comfortable uh, wire stock, considering. I am kind of uh, bummed out that there aren't more cuts on here so that you can adjust, adjust your length of pull. Uh, that's that's kind of a bit of a points off for me, but for those of you who got large, who are larger, um, th this should work just fine for you. You see here that my uh, hand is very comfortable in that uh, vertical foregrip. You see that it is a very comfortable gun to shoulder and use. Just aiming down like this, it's very it's very comfortable. There are a couple of issues that I don't like. Uh, about the gun, particularly the wobbly handguard, uh, or not handguard, the wobbly trigger. Now, what I mean by that is when I'm uh, moving this up and down, there's a lot of play before I can actually switch it to the next fire mode. That's a bit of a turnoff for me because if I want to switch from full auto to semi auto, I don't want to have that huge, like, the huge distance of play before I can uh, snap it in. But aside from that, when you do snap it in, it's very crisp. It does sound very nice. Uh, but again, that length of play, or that amount of play is kind of a turnoff. Now again, this is not from the gun being old. This is actually from the gun uh, straight out of the box. This is uh, how it's going to be when it's brand new, so keep an eye on that when you buy one of these. Another issue is that bolt catch, so when you're doing a tactical reload, so I'm just going to drop the mag here, you can see that drop it, <clears throat> dropping the bolt requires your finger to go up. Now, let's go ahead and do that again. When I'm doing a quick reload, I want to move my finger down so that I can get my finger on the trigger and uh, back into the action. However, having to do two motions and then to get your finger back onto the trigger is very wasteful in terms of ergonomics. I don't know why KBWA decided to do that. It's a huge shame though. Um, it really, that part takes away from the gun um, in terms of handling. At least in my experience, I'm pretty sure you can train to do uh, to get used to this bolt catch. But my question is why, when you can get uh, a different a I guess AEG or gas blowback that has that proper uh, bolt catch release. Aside from that, magazine release is uh, it's just fine. It's just like a USP. So for those of you who run USP type of uh, uh, pistols this is going to feel at home. I do like that the reload is hand on hand. This is actually uh, a huge plus for anyone running uh, nods essentially. <laughs> if you're uh, running Gucci gang type nods and you do low light type of uh, games, mil sims, that sort of thing. Hand on hand it f is very good for those type of environments because when you when you have a limited visibility the uh, <clears throat> it's easy to remember where to reload instead of having to you know put another mag at the front and kind of guess where it is with hand on hand it is very good for remembering where to reload so it's got that going for it uh, aside from handling how does it this thing perform well let's go over accuracy now because this is a compact package it's not a full-length rifle by any means, this is, uh, it's okay at accuracy. Uh, don't expect it to be accurate out over 100 feet. Uh, cut it down to like 50. The cone, uh, the cone of uh, fire is like yay big at around 100 feet. It's about torso, about the size of my torso at least. Uh, it's not a laser. If you want a laser, get an AG. <laughs> But uh, you're not here for AGs, right? Uh, you're here for the gas blowback. 
but aside from that, the accuracy on it is kind of lackluster just due to the short barrel length. Um, and because this is not meant for a long range uh, shooting, this is meant for close quarters brawling, uh, like basically a shotgun, but a little more, a little more compact, a little more, uh, a little more tactical than, than a shotgun. <laughs> uh, aside from that, felt recoil is, mm, is kind of lackluster as well. Uh, firing this thing and just mag dumping it, y you're not going to really feel much. It'll vibrate in your hands, but it, that's pretty much it. I would kind of compare this to an AUG in terms of felt recoil. Maybe slightly stronger than that. So it's kind of disappointing uh, in the end when you're running this and you pull the trigger and it does make that lovely burnt noise, but um, it just kind of it just kind of vibrates in, in your hand and you can't really feel any recoil into your shoulder. Uh, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of disappointing because that's one of the primary reasons why people buy uh, gas blowbacks is for the recoil for the experience. But uh, aside from that, uh, finally we'll go into efficiency. Efficiency is, it's okay. Um, you could go through a full mag dump with these, no problem. But you can't go for a second time. Now, unlike a, um, it's M, like the LM4 or uh, VFC type rifles or heck WeTech, where you can go through multiple uh, rounds of BBs before filling up on gas. Uh, this one, its efficiency is not exactly good enough for that, so you will have to refill on gas after you do a full mag dump. And even when I did a full mag dump on this, the gun started to chug around the last couple of rounds, but it did manage to lock open, so it's got that going for it. Uh, but in the end, do I recommend this gun? Uh, well, that's kind of difficult. Um, there's, there's a lot of inherent issues with this particular uh, example. Uh, particularly the, just these KWA guns. Uh, from what I've seen, their quality control is very spotty, so you've got to be very lucky to get a uh, MP7 with, uh, I guess, in such pristine condition as this, uh, where it, you know, you can use it for a long time, no receiver cracking. Uh, but the accuracy is kind of an issue, and actually, I have had issues uh, with the feeding. Uh, it does tend to double feed occasionally, uh, which, I mean, if you're in full auto, makes makes sense. But in single action, it makes no sense, because it's, it's just a waste of ammo at that point. But, uh, yeah, in, in the end, do I recommend these? Um, unfortunately, no. And it's a, it's a shame, because I really like these, uh, these PDWs, or SMGs. They're, they're very small, they're compact, they look they look fantastic, especially when you throw a laser and appropriately tiny sized RMR on it. It's just kind of like got that spec ops cool type of look to it. But at the end of the day, it's your decision to make. I'm just here to help provide a better uh, insight on this uh, gun so that you can make a better decision when making this purchase. Uh, Bear in mind, though, that you can find these everywhere on uh, on Hop Up, uh, what is it, uh, Red, like Reddit, the Airsoft Market. Uh, like I said, because of the spotty quality control, these guns do have um, have the receiver cracking issue. So when you own and run one of these, just be on the lookout for that. And that's uh, pretty much it. That's the end of this video. I <clears throat> thank you for staying around this long. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that. <laughs> 100 subscriber milestone, I'm not going to beat that up to death just yet. Um, again, uh, thank you to the uh, Heavy Recoil Club. They've been very helpful in uh, gathering information on this uh, particular PDW, SMG, whatever. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.